for uh, the last talk of this uh, third session, which is going to be given by Professor Katz. And the title is uh, Outdoor Degradation of Perovskite Photovoltaics, Interplay of Reversible and Irreversible Processes and Effects of Light Intensity and Electric Bias. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. So I have a <coughs> very simple topic. It's outdoor uh, degradation study and a very long li list of courses. Uh, most of uh, Ben-Gurion courses are here in the audience. It's Dr. Iris Visoli fisher who will talk tomorrow about our <coughs> study of uh, accelerated study of uh, the degradation of perovskite by concentrated sunlight. Dr. Mark Henkin, who made most of the measurements for this work. Uh, this work is uh, part of our long-term ongoing collaboration with uh, Yulia Galagan from the Hall Center. And we also have some grant plan for future. And uh, the last part of the talk, the last measurement we started when Harold Hopi visited us during his short-term uh, uh, visit uh, uh, thanks cost. So, uh, yes, this is uh, our campus, which in the Negev, in the desert, in the middle, middle of the... We have very good sun in terms of uh, stability of intensity and spectrum, very near to MS 1.5, uh, noon time plus minus two, three hours, and also <clears throat> very good ratio between direct and diffuse light, which makes possible uh, concentrated sunlight study and using. So, this is, we were motivated by some results uh, following to Alder a sentence today, I, I modified it a bit. This is not uh, my own group data, but I still believe in, the, in them. So, the first data come from, from uh, Lausanne. They, they showed that uh, uh, the degradation can be completely reversible during the very strong degradation during uh, the light, not very strong actually, it's about 10%. And then during the uh, <clears throat> dark time, it was the indoor measurement, of course. So they were completely reversed. No, no any trace of irreversible degradation for this cell. But it <clears throat> was uh, some data, a number of papers about opposite behavior, where people measured degradation during night and increase, a long time increase during the day, and they claim it fatigue-like behavior. So this is a whole center uh, solar cells. The perovskite is triple cation perovskite, and uh, it's about 15% for fresh samples. There are some, but not strong hysteres. So uh, you see this, uh, this is a measurement in dark, the degradation in, in indoor for these cells, measured by Morton Manson, uh, who is also in the audience. And uh, you see that <coughs> T80, it's about one hour. During one hour, the cells lost their <coughs> initial efficiency. If you do it outdoor and compare what, what we get indoor for, the, let's say, for some, uh, let's say, first four, 14 hours of the degradation, the outdoor you will get the same. This is the degradation, a similar de degradation during uh, the first uh, day. But then during night, it's increased. And then it's decreased again. And you see that there is <coughs> some reversible and irreversible degradation in this case. And I will also show you evidence that it's, there is something what we call apparently uh, irreversible, but later. But the question is how we. Now, T80 continue with what we, we call it. It doesn't work because during the, let's say, first four days, it's, it's every day there is its own data. Uh, intuitively, we can, okay, the, the, the highest data every day during the first 11 days because then the <coughs> mechanism of diurnal dynamics changed. But uh, during the first 11 days, the highest data is in the morning. So intuitively, we can take so-called, we call it T80 maximum, this during this, uh, uh, let's go this way, yeah? And this will be four days, comparing with one hour. So, uh, <clears throat> but it's also misleading, completely misleading, if we think about uh, this kind of 
energy output, which is our aim in photovoltaics. The daily energy output will be different. So what we suggest as a figure of merit of degradation or of a lifetime is so-called T80 prime. Is the time when <coughs> not efficiency, but the energy output lost its initial uh, 20%. Oh, this paper was initially <coughs> published in Energy and Environmental Science. So you can see that uh, it can be a big difference if you compare it. In this case, for example, it's about 20% difference if you measure it only for the maximum values or you really uh, put in the consideration all dynamics, diurnal dynamics. Yeah, but this is a miracle what's happened <coughs> at the 11 days. So what is going on, it's changed for the behavior, what we call type one, the maximum uh, value is in the morning, degradation during day, increased during night, and it's changed to opposite behavior. It starts to be increasing during day and degradation during night. So it's uh, push us to study more <coughs> detailed, uh, to more detailed study of the dynamics of restoration in the dark. And this is again uh, data by Morton and his group. And it's a beautiful show how complicated the situation is. This uh, we published in, in the new journal, American Chemical Society Applied Energy Materials. What is going on? If the efficiency dropped to 80% of its initial value, it has a very nice and very fast, of course it can be done during first night, uh, restoration. But if it drops on 60% of, of its initial value, it's also restored. It's a reversible behavior. But the time of restoration, it's much longer than one night. And in outdoor uh, measurements, it will appear as irreversible uh, dynamics. So this we call uh, apparently irreversible dynamics. But the most miracle is what's happened when it's degraded, when the cell degraded uh, up to 50% uh, of its initial behavior. Then when we switch, ah, yeah, I didn't say it. This is, uh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's good that I'm not first who has shown these uh, bad figures, but anyway, this is a time when we switch on the light. Yes, this one, this one, and this one. When we switch on the light for the devices degraded to 50% of, of efficiency, in the dark, it's a strong decrease in time. And then it can be stabilized, and it can show also very long afterwards. And this is, we believe that this is what we have also outdoor. I will show it a bit later. We also discuss possible mechanism for reversible, irreversible, apparently reversible behavior. The main candidate for reversible is ion migration, which is already discussed a lot today. It could be also <coughs> bulk trap formations of other kind. We also believe that it's possible perovskite decomposition, but study <coughs> Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, phase segregation, because it's a mix. Study photoluminescence, we, we, we say that this is not in our case. Uh, for irreversible, it's also, po can be perovskite decomposition and transverse layer degradation. I would like to say that all of the results I showed today were absorbed before uh, uh, BA2 started to be formed. Uh, this is the most questionable, what is the mechanism for this uh, apparently irreversible mechanism, and we, we speculate in the paper about it. If somebody interested, we can discuss it later. So now if you see that this is a type 1 behavior and type 2 behavior on the same cell, outdoor, it started to be <coughs> degraded during the day, restoration uh, during night, and then change it to other kind of behavior. Effect of uh, light intensity we study in the device which uh, some devices will put it on a fixed stand and on a solar tracker. And you see that intensity it has the same, both results have the same <coughs> trends, but the diurnal variation, uh, it's much stronger. Intensity, light intensity is stronger when we put it on a... So, uh, <coughs> now I'd like to discuss something which were not included in these two papers, it's a bias effect. And I think in our community, we believe that uh, the de 
Perovskite cell degradation is stronger in open circuit if we compare it with short circuit or maximum power point. So we study this uh, device in open circuit versus device being in short circuit. And I would say our conclusion is the situation is very, very complicated. I will share, uh, share with you <laughs> what it means. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> first of all, you see that during the first seven days where this type one behavior, uh, uh, efficiency degraded faster in short circuit due to, uh, mostly due to short circuit and field factor. And after these seven days, and it's, it's correspond, this transition corresponds roughly to the f uh, transition from uh, type one to type two, uh, it start to be opposite. Now, the devices in open circuit is worse than the devices in short circuit. Uh, the complication is, is mostly that you can see that uh, the change of different principal parameters of solar cells, mainly open circuit voltage, short circuit current, and field factor, are also different. Look on these results in, in, a, in the first seven days. Diurnal changes in of, uh, VOC is are larger than in or, or open, or open circuit than in short circuit. But for short circuit currents, it's opposite. So, uh, how we can Explaining. First of all, we suggest that there are a number of different mechanisms of degradation involved. Each of these mechanisms can have its own bias dependent. For example, in short circuit, it's a most, uh, most strong field, and iron movement can be stronger in short circuit. If if uh, what's happening in open circuit, we generate a lot of charge. It's charge accumulation. All mechanism which depends on charge accumulation can be stronger in open circuit. For example, the <coughs> uh, photo uh, effect of uh, photo photoactive oxygen, it's shown that it's very stronger, depend on a, on a charge accumulation of the device. And this is, I think, the case which uh, we observed in <coughs> devices produced in, uh, in Harald Hotry gr group. This is inverted devices, and we know that the main problem of these devices was non-ideal encapsulation. So oxygen can be, can be in the effect. And you see that for all parameters, ah, what, what I didn't say is that they degraded uh, pretty fast, and uh, only VOC show some reversible dynamics. But in all cases, in all time, and all parameters, the degradation in open circuit is stronger and faster than in short circuit. So summary. <coughs> Operational stability of perovskite cells. We demonstrate diurnal changes in performance of two types. And these two types on the same devices, depending on the stage of the degradation of the device. We suggest the new figure of merit the daily energy output for performance and the time of its 20% drops for lifetime. Uh, we really believe that this is a, a fundamental uh, figure of merit. It can be, it doesn't depend if there is a reversible or irreversible degradation. It can be applied for any kind of, of perovskite solar cells and not only for perovskite solar cells. Uh, degradation under real operational conditions involves reversible and irreversible mechanisms. Bias effects, uh, open circuit versus short circuit, can be different for various principal PV parameters, namely VOC, short circuit current field factor, can be different for various degradation mechanisms, and dominant effects may depend on the stage of the device degradation. My acknowledgement to all guys from uh, Morton Group who are not in my long list of courses, uh, but anyway, we really appreciate uh, collaboration with this group. And my thanks for, of, co of course, for the cost and for Monica in person for this great work and uh, some uh, money from Israel Ministry of Energy and Adelis Foundation. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eugene. So now time for question. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, you mentioned the, the increase during at night. 
Was the cell at this point short circuit or was it at open circuit? All or results how? I showed you in the beginning was in only in open circuit. And I will tell you, it's not in my talk, but we, need, we want to reproduce it. It's a completely different story for this restoration. Not only the degradation mm -hmm. depend on short circuit, open circuit, also the restoration can be very, very different if it's an open circuit. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite obvious that it's certainly the light intensity that at, during night that is zero, but could it be <laughs> yeah, that also... I agree. <laughs> no, but could it be that also the temperature has an influence? The temperature may have an influence. We see it. No, I, I don't know about the dark, but uh, the temperature of outdoor can change. We, I can show you the result of temperature and uh, if, uh, light intensity during the day. We measure it. And yes, temperature, of course, uh, affect the rate of the degradation, but not the mechanism and not the trend. What, what I show you, these different trends, completely different trends in diurnal dynamics. This is not effect of temperature, what I think. Yeah. <clears throat> oh dear. It's okay? I right. stand up, okay. <coughs> Hello. Um, James Darn from Imperial and Swansea. In fact, that was very interesting. Uh, I was wondering how much the complexity is correlated with the presence of hysteresis, and whether you've studied cells which show yes. much lower hysteresis. We did it. It's in the paper. I don't have the slide with it. Uh, what we observe is that even the sign of hysteresis can be changed. I mean, if we... Uh, maybe Mark is... Uh, Mark, can you comment in, on it? That this is better because so it's like not that clear like how the hysteresis, hysteresis changes. It's not that direct. But when your cell degrades, it increases, and also we kind of saw that in VOC, it can even like change. If you're like in the morning, it's like higher VOC in reverse direction, and then in the evening it switches to the opposite. So it could be like really interesting topic to explore. If, if, if that, that was interesting. This figure is written in the paper. Yeah. But that wasn't my question. But my yeah. question was, if you measured a cell which doesn't show hysteresis, yes. does the situation become simpler? Because there are some Voskite cells I which don't show hysteresis. I couldn't say it. No, 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 I couldn't say it. Yeah, I understand your question. Well, it was but but uh, just a second. I mentioned the paper by Grossel Group, yeah. and they claim that efficiency is 20%, and they claim that there is no hysteresis at all. And it was the same the same behavior, reversibility. So, but I would have, we have no such conclusion, we do the same. But what, what Mark mentioned, it's very interesting. <clears throat> so maybe, uh, are there other questions? No, if not uh, that, the discussion can continue afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we conclude now the session. And thank uh, Eugenio again. Yeah. Thank you.